Okay, with this shot, I guarantee you're going to laugh when you find out what the cheat is. See if you can spot it. Let's jump in. So there are a couple of things with this which I had to tweak. Let's have a look. The node tree is a little bit more complicated in this for a very good reason. At the end of the chain, we have a little bit of overall correction just to levels with curves and just a tiny bit of a boost in saturation with that as well. Nothing to write home about. We get to this section just here. I've got a little splitter and this is what I'm doing. Each of these nodes is one of the feet of the tripod just there because after we did our horse shoot, it turns out that somebody didn't clean the feet of the tripod. I did actually ask someone to clean them. I said, someone needs to clean this before we go to Barcelona, but it turns out that did not happen. Also, because I'm not behind the camera, I'm not seeing this. I am trying to just be cool in shot in the background just there. So I don't know that's happening. I noticed later on in the shoot and we corrected it later on, but at this point we didn't know. And we needed this shot. This shot's just so cool. Nanky looks really great just there. And it's an awesome shot of us just walking out. I wanted to use it. It was just so cool. So I thought, mm, maybe I can fix this. So what I did was I grabbed a trusty little power window, drew around the foot. You can see the detail with which I have drawn around that foot just there. Went into the tracker, tracked it on, and this is a testament to the tracking and resolve because it is just flawless. Once that was tracked on, I went in, tweaked some things within the curves just to make it feel a little bit more like uh, the foot was black and uh, had that rubber texture to it. Boosted down the gain in the primary windows, pulled the saturation down, did a couple of other little tweaks, um, bought in a tiny bit of blur just to smooth it out a bit, and we get to that. So within this now, you probably can tell if you look at it, there's a little bit of grayness where the mud is, but that one especially. But it works. You can't really even see the power windows on it at all. If you know, you can tell there's something perhaps a little bit weird going on with the foot, but there's no way on earth anyone's going to look at this shot and say someone's tracked a power window onto the foot of that tripod. So yeah, I was quite pleased with how well that actually worked. I wish I hadn't had to do it, but there you are. This is the kind of level of detail that we have to go to sometimes in the grade to make things work. Now there's something else as well. I have got a little bit of film convert on this shot because I felt the film convert was giving us the right look. You know, everyone's skin looks good. It's not oversaturated. It's got a kind of classy feel to it. And then we have this. All of the background just here is literally rubbish. We've got this big bin back here which is kind of killing the vibe. And when it had all of those signs on it, it really draws your eye because we've got quite a big gap between Nauki and I. I kind of falls just here, which is problematic. So I just went in, blurred that a little bit, took the saturation down again, trusty power window, just tracked on. It's got a bit of blur. It's got a little bit of correction to uh, primaries just there. And then I've done a similar thing on the other elements of the sign as well. Just taking that side down, taking that side down. With this one, had to be a little bit careful not to have the track stick to the model. You see our arms just there. So it sticks to her for a moment, but then it latches onto that. Worked well enough. So that is the deception with this shot. Take everything off and you can see we've got the mud on there, we've got the signs on there. But in the final shot, your eye settles on Nauki. Definitely, here's the center of the frame. You see the tripod, see me in the background. It's not important that I'm the center of the frame just here. I am just there because you're gonna see me operating the camera in a minute and it works really nicely. You're probably finding this on shoots that you do. There's a shot that you wanna use, but there's something distracting in the background or something that's not quite perfect. More and more, I'm able to correct these little minor things in Resolve and just polish everything. It's almost to the stage now where we're doing what the photographers do in retouching actually on moving video. It is time consuming. You've got to practice doing it, but it can save a shot. And in this situation, I don't think I would have used it if we had the muddy tripod feet in the shot. I would have gone with something different, but we were able to save that, so that's awesome. 
I'm just gonna skip through these cause there's not all that much going on. It's pretty much just a LUT and then some minor corrections to levels, maybe a bit of denoising. Um, I will often be popping the reds a little bit, but that's nothing to write home about. So yeah, that's just a feature of everything that we're doing just here. Nothing on this one. This one, I've made some corrections to the floor because the floor is a little bit bright, kind of distracting. All of these are just the same story, nothing crazy. Now on this, there were a few other corrections I did, which maybe I will have a quick look at. So just here, the biggest correction that I did was actually to my hand. Because it's quite a cold day, my hand is sort of pink and frozen. <laughs> so to get around that, I just did a little qualifier tool, um, went in, qualifier of my hand, we can see all that selected, clean the blacks, denoised a little bit, tiny little bit of blower radius, and then I corrected that out with uh, the primary window just there. Little tiny bit of curves maybe, yep. Yeah. So curves, hue v hue, and I'm just pulling that, pushing that just to make sure that my hand doesn't look frozen and pink. More a vanity thing for me than anything else, I want my hands to look lovely. Again, just skipping through these, not much to talk about. Some of them literally are just the LUT where the shot is strong and we've lit. We've done most of the work that we want already. So we've got a good contrast between the background and the foreground. We can see the outline of the tripod. We've got our model just here, purple. We've got a little bit of interest in the back just there. We don't need to do that much to it. It already works, so it is just a LUT. Skipping through, skipping through. There's a little bit of fiddling going on here because I need to tidy up something down in the corner. Um, I'm not a fan of this shot. I think that it didn't ever quite hang together. Looks nice enough, but it's not my favorite for various reasons, but that's all good. Not every shot can be your favorite. Quite a lot of work in these shots on getting uh, the white to sit where I want it to. We don't want it to be blown out and that's quite hard on the GH5. The latitude is nowhere near as good as on the Ursa or on the pocket. So with this, I'm just trying to pull everything back, tame it down, make it feel like uh, this is a more balanced shot. And that's true of all of these. There's also a little bit of correction going on to the color of those so that it feels a little bit colder. We don't want to feel too warm in the snow. We want to make sure that it maintains that look. And actually trying to maintain the look of snow in between shots can be quite tricky. Obviously the light changes, um, sometimes it's actually snowing, sometimes it's not. So you do find there's a bit of a change. These are some of the Blackmagic RAW shots that I was filming. So you can see we've got uh, close-ups of all of the waterfall and that kind of thing. I'm on the 7200. Had quite a lot of fun with these actually because it does look super dramatic with the snow falling and everything coming across the shot just there. And then we've got this awesome waterfall just kind of cascading down. A little bit of noise reduction on that. I am on the crop mode to get that close in because we're very, very long way from that waterfall, but it works really nicely. And then we got Ben's awesome dramatic drone shot, river down here, waterfall in the background, me in the foreground. Not too much going on with that. A little bit of a correction to the white, a little bit of overall levels, and then the LUT at the front end. For this shot, it's really important that you knew what was going on and that your eye was drawn to the adjustments of the leg angle instantly. It's only on screen for a split second, but I needed to make that a bit more obvious. So, to do this, I just went in, gonna sound like a broken record, put a little track window around that, just there, and then I was able to make an adjustment to everything with curves. I was able to make an adjustment to everything with curves and a little bit of a tweak just here in the primaries, bring the saturation down so that the white doesn't uh, get contaminated so that we get nice contrast and it just makes everything a little bit more obvious. There's also a tiny bit going on, actually quite heavy for my standards, uh, blur reduction. I use that instead of sharpening, so I just pull the blur down. I'm down to 0.44 there rather than 0.5. So we have quite a lot, in fact, Let's reset that. Yeah, quite a lot of sharpening on that just to help to bring your eye to this part of the frame and make sure that you can read it in the split second that you're looking at it. And without that frame around those, you can see it's there, but it doesn't stand out. There, it's zinging. You can instantly see it. Here, 
yeah, it's the center of the frame. It's sort of where your eye's being led to, but there's a lot going on. There's movement, there's all kinds of other things. You're coming from another frame where the focus might not be in quite the same place. So that just helps the eye along, picks everything out and makes sure that we're looking at the thing that we should be looking at. This one's quite fun. There's quite a lot going on, but I didn't want to destroy the ratio just here because we did have this glorious sun screaming in. Uh, got an awesome lens flare. Ben did a great job of making this shot. Actually, I can't remember whether it's Ben or Naki. Whoever did it, it's an awesome job. Bit of noise reduction at the front end because I'm pulling the shadows up quite a bit in this. And when you're pulling the shadows up, especially on the GH5, you're going to want to clean that up. So I've cleaned that off a bit. Raised everything up. I pulled down the level of the sky quite a lot just there. And that's really just bringing all of that detail back in, makes it so much more sumptuous. There's the LUT. This adjustment just here is just helping to pull that flare out across everything. There's a couple of little things going on with that. I have done a little bit of sharpening, actually quite a lot of sharpening. We're down to 0 0.39 to make sure that we're focused on that fast just there and we can see the grip. We've tracked this on, got that window there, some adjustments to the curve so that we can pop all of this out. And then finally, a little bit of adjustment going on within the primaries as well, just for good measure. And again, same as with the last shot, it doesn't do everything. It's not going to save a shot by itself, but it does draw your eye to where we want you to be looking. But at the same time, with all of these shots, I want you to be taking the whole scene because it's about feeling like the whole shoot is cool and you wanna be there. So yeah, I'm trying to sell you the tripod with this advert, but I need you to feel like the shoot is cool and you want to be on that shoot. All of the other things are permutations what we've seen already, a bit of correction to the sky, and then this just here is helping to bloom that out. You can see it's a little bit hard around the edges there, so I wanted to pull it out a bit further, make sure it's bleeding a bit more out. So I've done that with OpenFX Glow, and that just allows me to pull that out a bit, and that's within a power window. If the power window was off, it would be going over the whole image, and I didn't want it to take that kind of dreamy aesthetic. It's too, too much, too soft. So I just wanted it in that area, just bleeding out a bit, and I feathered that off as well. This is also tracked on just to make sure that we're not getting anything weird. And with all of these shots where we're doing the fashion shoot, I haven't really done much to it. It's just a couple of things, maybe a little bit of glow, maybe a little bit of film convert, but I was doing most of what I wanted in camera. I had the filters, I had the flare sticks, I had the lighting, um, I could change the color temperatures. So most of what has happened has been baked in and that was the look that I was going for. So I don't need to try and build something um, in the grade. And that's interesting actually, when you look at some of the shots and some of the corrections that I was doing, on the less controlled environmental shots, they're far more complex than what I'm doing on these fashion shots where I have control of the light, I have control of the look, I'm actually filming those. So it's a much more straightforward proposition in terms of grade to get the look that I'm after and to make everything pop because most of it's already been done. And if you are ever wondering, that is kind of a testament to doing it in camera. If you're able to do it in camera, if you've got the time, if you've got the crew, if you've got the lighting, then it's going to make everything so much easier in post and everything's just a gentle polish rather than a big correction and trying to build the shot in the grade. Did quite a lot of work on the horse just here. It's all fairly subtle, mostly just power windows and slight corrections of level. A little bit of dehaze there, a little bit of glow just there, and then finally film convert at the end. So subtle things, but just pushing and pulling to make the image sit together. Here, my biggest concern was that the sky was too bright. So I wanted that just to sit a little bit lower. We didn't want it to feel like it was bright sunlight in the middle of the day. We still wanted to have that morning vibe. So I just needed the level of the sky to come down a tiny, tiny bit. And because for that shot, we're working in Blackmagic Raw, we have all of that detail and we just pull it back. You do see this, the GH5 shots, I'm having to massage a lot more these Blackmagic Raw shots tend to just work a lot better with a simple correction. You can pull it back and you don't have to dance around so much to get the image to sit 